that total number is $284,356.75. Um, as in years past, my budget increases during the even-numbered years because of the number of elections held in those years. My 2018 proposed budget has an increase of 16%. This is mostly due to the election cycle. However, I have a few more severely needed items that needed my attention this year that have also played a part in the increase. Under regular wages, pending approval by the Selectmen and Teamsters, Teamsters Union, it is my plan to promote the bookkeeper to senior bookkeeper and change the title of bookkeeper to full-time assistant clerk. Currently, there is no position in the Teamsters bargaining agreement for full-time assistant clerk, only part-time. This plan would not add another position to the agreement, but change an existing position that is not needed to one that is and add one more body to the union. This plan increases the regular wages line item from $80,480 to $110,292. To uh, kind of back up that, um, that request, I would like to just let you know what we do in the town clerk's office. We do motor vehicle registrations, boat registrations, dog licensing, OHRV registrations, hunting and fishing licenses, vital records and marriage licenses, voter registration, election administration, including day of and preparation months before, including absentee ballots, beach and transfer station decals, oaths of office, and notary services. Why I need another position. My staff is amazing, but they are not and should not have to be miracle workers. The day of it only being busy on the first and last day of the month and Mondays are over. As of August 30th, revenue in 2017 is up more than 200,000 over last, over last year at that time. August 28th was our busiest day on record. For security purposes, I will only say that on that day, our revenue was eight times our 2017 daily average. Lines are to the door on most days. During these overly busy times, staff is unable to even use the restroom until their lunch break. As far as the number of transactions we process, speaking motor vehicle only, and keeping in mind that we do much more than just motor vehicle, although it is 90% of what we do. 10 years ago in 2007, when I was first elected town clerk, there were 18,638 vehicles registered in town. This year, we project that number at 21,177 vehicles. The number of transactions in 2007 were 18,891, and this year we project that number to be 21,474. Total revenue collected in 2007 was $3.5 million, 2.7 million of that to be town funds. And this year's total is projected at 4.7 million, with 3.7 million of that to be town funds. That is an increase of $1 million over a 10 year period. With the exception of a file clerk who works 16 hours per week, just filing, our staffing is exactly the same as it was in 2007. Not only have the numbers increased, but we also provide many more services than we did in 2007, including OHRV registrations, hunting and fishing licenses, and our registered voters have increased significantly, up over 3,000 voters as well. There isn't a report available to monitor the number of phone calls received, transferred to other departments, providing numerous pieces of information to phone customers per day. I have two part-timers. One works Monday, Tuesday, which is 17 hours. The other works Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, which is a total of 21 hours. One can work, if available, an additional day and a half. The other, if available, can work only one extra day beyond her scheduled days. This becomes a problem when a full-timer or part-timer takes vacation, is out sick, or there is a family emergency. This scenario actually happened only a few weeks ago. One employee was away on vacation, another was off due to a family member having surgery. There were three of us scheduled for this particular day. I was already covering one of the positions, time away from my duties at my desk. One of the other two scheduled for that day had a family emergency over the weekend, which required her to take Monday and Tuesday off. I was covering the bookkeeper, which keeps the window closed until mid-morning to do the bookkeeping. That left one window open until the bookkeeping was completed. completed on a Monday. Not a good scenario. Our office has been running thin for several years now as it has come to a point that I have no choice but to do something about it. We have tried to band-aid the situation for the past couple of years, but the time has come to fix the root of the problem. I would just like to say that a part-timer will not be useful to me at all as they cannot work any more hours than the 29.5 hour policy allows. 
to add to the scenario, if this had been during election time, it would have been a disaster. Would have been disastrous, as I am tied to my desk during elections and have zero time to assist at the windows. Moving on to the part-time wages, um, I have a 50%, 50%, 50 cent increase, um, which is 4.7% for the file clerk wages. We were extremely fortunate to hire a file clerk at $11 an hour. We're even more fortunate to find an exemplary employee who has stayed in the position at this salary, performing the duties that no one wants to perform. Rosemary has exceeded my expectations of this position and has been able to keep our filing relatively up to date and neatly organized. Not only has she been filing, but during elections, she collates and prepares absentee ballots for the clerks and me to distribute to the voters. The value of this position is priceless. Um, under town clerk wages, um, there is a request for a 3% raise. The town clerk is an elected official, not, an, not a union employee or a non-union em employee. I understand that there may be a movement to decrease this line item to 1.5% based on the fact that the non-union employees are slated to receive 1.5%. I would caution comparing elected officials to union or non-union employees as those employees receive monetary benefits the town clerk and tax collector do not. Some non-union employees are able to sell back leave time to cover employee cost of medical and dental benefits as well as additional payments to the New Hampshire retirement system. It is my understanding as well, and please collect, correct me if I'm wrong, that if the budget does not pass, the selectmen still have the authority to provide non-union employees with an increase. The town clerk and the tax collector in recent years have not been included in that increase and as such have had for four years over the past 10 years that those positions did not receive a wage adjustment. I strongly believe that every employee should receive an increase as their cost of doing business increases just as the town does, so please do not mistake my caution of comparison as a lack of support for any other employees in town. The 3% that I am requesting is $1,860. This is 9 tenths of 1% of the increase in motor vehicle revenue thus far in 2017 alone. To go even further and to put it even more into perspective, this increase is a mere five hundredths of one percent of the total revenue collected for the town in 2016 and only four hundredths of one percent of the total revenue projected for the town in 2017. I think, based on the responsibility held by the town clerk, the revenue, the position, and its staff collects, and the fact that all of this has been done without an increase in personnel over the 10-year period for which I have summarized, this 3% increase is extremely reasonable and not to mention well-deserved. Additionally, this position is still underpaid when compared to other towns with similar year-round population. And this is still not taking into consideration that our town population increases to, if not the largest city in New Hampshire, at least one of the largest cities in New Hampshire during the summer months. I am happy to show you the results of my research from 2016, which shows Hampton as the busiest in its population class, yet the lowest paid for the same. Uh, under computer support, the yearly maintenance fee for registration and dog licensing software is up only $29. Uh, that's a contractual item with our motor vehicle um, software, motor vehicle and dog licensing software into air development. Under staff development, uh, I increased the conferences and meetings and mileage uh, by $1,450. I increased this line item simply because some conferences have not been budgeted in the past and it has been overspent over the past few years. The conferences in which I attend are crucial to keeping the office running efficiently and to keep myself and my staff up to date on current laws and practices that directly affect the operations of the office, elections, motor vehicle registrations, and other facets of our duties. Under voter registration, uh, moving on to voter registration of the portion of the budget, although we have more elections in 2018 than we did in 2017, this increase is minimal at $532 and is merely due to the additional staffing needed to register voters at deliberative session in February, the New Hampshire primary in September, and the general election in November. Um, again, the election administration budget is cyclical. It fu fluctuates up and down like a roller coaster every other year the uphill climb during even-numbered years, and the sailing downhill in the odd-numbered years. 2018 brings technically four elections, deliberative session in February, town meeting in March, New Hampshire primary in September, and the general election in November. All of these elections require staffing and food service. Additionally, each election comes with coding for the AccuVote memory cards. Within the election expense line item, we have added one more AccuVote machine to our arsenal of election tools. This comes with an additional $225 for annual maintenance, but we, the moderator and I, 
believe, considering that the machines are getting older and there is no replacement model allowable by, by New Hampshire election law, that we needed to obtain one more machine to cover those items when a machine is pulled out of service for one reason or another. But make no mistake, though, these machines are amazingly accurate. That is all I have, and I will take any questions that you may have. Regina. Um, thank you for explaining everything so well, and I've seen the lines in the town hall on Mondays every day, and I've seen you back there. And I also went through, my mother had to go through some personal paperwork, and everyone, two or three people we spoke with, and they were all great, and they all knew exactly what to do. Thank so you. So I have no questions. Thank you. Thank you. I think we have a great staff from the town clerk all the way down <clears throat> to our lowest employee. My only question is, with, with your increase here, Will that open up the hours on Friday afternoon? No. What would that cost us to do that? Um, our, our, let me go, let me step back a little bit. Back in 2009 when I changed the hours, they were 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Monday through Friday. We had a lot of complaints from people saying we weren't open early enough and open late enough. So I put out into the newspaper, you know, this is what we're thinking of doing. Please send me your feedback. I'm more than happy to listen. I had nine people contact me, and eight out of the nine were positive to the change of changing it to 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Thursday and 8, 8 a.m. to 11.30 on um, Friday. The reason why we have not changed, we can't open any more than that, is the um, union employees can only work 35 hours a week, and that, that fits the 35 hours a week. As it is, uh, I have one, em one employee on Wednesday and one on Thursday that cut back their hours, um, it's three hours. They get out at 2.30 on, on Wednesday and Thursday, one each, because their hours go over by changing the, um, the hours during. We added more hours to the week, so we had to deduct from somewhere, and that's why we're closed early on Fridays, because those, those hours had to come from somewhere. I'm glad you explained that, because you know, I, I have a number of people that ask me, especially if you in here in the afternoon, how can they close Fridays? And mm -hmm. And I told them that that was something that was done a number of years ago to make it better for everybody. But right. you just explained exactly the reason why, and I appreciate that. Thank you. No questions. Ms. Griffin. <clears throat> so basically you're asking for one new employee? Yes. One full-time assistant clerk is what I'm looking for. And you don't feel like it could be done with uh, part-time? No. The situation that we're in with... Um, is a, in, what is the law that tells us we, we can only have part-timers work 29 and a half hours a week? What is that? It's retirement and, and, uh, and a federal statute. Okay. So currently, <clears throat> as I said earlier, we have one employee that, one, I have two part-timers that work the windows. So one of them works 21 hours a week and the other one works 17 hours a week. So they, like my, my girl that works at 21 hours a week, she can only work one day. So, you know, one extra day. So if I have someone out on vacation or sick or what have you, she can only cover for me one day. And there's been many occasions where I've needed her more than that one day and I can't have her come in. Now, if I were to have another part-timer, I can't, number one, I can't predict what days we're going to be busy because it's not just Mondays and the first and the last day of the month anymore. Um, Part-timers are hard to come by because this is a very taxing job. It takes two to three years to train someone fully in this position. People won't stay for the money that we pay for a part-timer. That's two. And it's, it's, I think it's a waste of our resources to train someone only to have them leave. I had three people leave in a one-year period that were part, you know, they were part-timers. So we spent three months training them and then one left and then we spent three months training someone else and they left and they were really good at what they I mean, it's not that they couldn't handle it they I don't know what to say about that but I will be honest with you I would prefer to have no one at all than another part-timer because it really doesn't do what I need it to do I need someone there the entire week to be able to cover the window thank you I hope that I hope that answers your question Thank you, thank you, um, town clerk, and, and thank you for the information. So I'm just looking at, at the details, and I'm looking at the um, the regular wages line is up 37%. Is that correct? 
I haven't done the actual calculation on what the uh, is that so correct, it, Christy? Um, okay. Thirty-seven point oh four. So, and, and just jumping out, and I'm, I'm not disagreeing with any need mm -hmm. or anything like that. I'm, I, I still want to have more discovery on this, and mm -hmm. I understand your tempo of operations there. Um, and when we get into the notes in terms of. Um, the five-year step, the 13 weeks, there's collective bargaining agreements that you're referencing, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. and, uh, and again, I'm not saying that I, I oppose those, but I need more research. And we do have um, uh, a uh, assistant town manager that wears the hat of a uh, personnel human resources director. Is that correct, Mr. Welch? Yes, it is. Okay, so uh, um, <clears throat> when I do a little bit more investigation uh, and get a, 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 some information, especially as it relates to uh, collective bargaining agreements, uh, when I get that from Mr. Sullivan, then I'll, I'll be able to uh, better analyze and make a decision on that. And, and again, I'm not saying that I'm opposed to it, but it's up 37 percent. We've got collective bargaining agreements, and we do have somebody in town that is paid to uh, offer recommendations to the board for that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, you're very thorough. Thank you. I'm not going to give you a heads up anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, at one time, the elected officials, when they went for a raise, went to Warren Articles. Sometimes. Sometimes. It's a, yeah. It's it's what? it's to the discretion of of the elected official as to whether they put it in the budget or do a Warren Article. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with uh, with Phil, and I just like to get a little bit more from Jamie mm -hmm. with, with the collective bargain and stuff. I mean, I do agree 100. percent I hate to see it up that much. But I do oh, agree I do too. I do too. But I. I wouldn't have done it if I didn't feel it yeah. was necessary. I do agree you need somebody else because you get down there and you look at the lines and it's insane how long it takes. The other thing is, do you have the physical room for another window? That is something we have to discuss after the fact. I was worried about having it passed before we figured out how we were going to put another per another body in the office. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, so I would like to... That's fine. Phil, do, you, do we need a motion, Phil, to continue this, or we just continue it? I don't no, think no. so. Not take anything just back. Just don't take an action. All right, do you have any input you want to add to this? Or? No, I, I think the, the town clerk is correct. I mean, I every day watch the lines, and they consistently get longer and longer and longer and longer. Um, when I came here ten years ago, there were very short lines, except on maybe the first day of the new month. Mm -hmm. People forgot to register the previous month. Uh, and maybe before a holiday because people were anxious to get things done. Uh, but this is consistently bad almost every single day. Today the lines were halfway across the hall, and she had all of her staff in. As far as I know, nobody's out. Yeah. <clears throat> but there's just not enough positions to take care of all the work is really what's going on. And the number of people that now have to come in and register their, ve their vehicles, um, I spent some time in the town clerk's office a couple of weeks ago and the gentleman came in with a stack like that of registrations and it took a, it was me. yeah and you were the one who did the registration was my and first customer it, of the it day it took a long long time that morning to get those registrations done they get to be very complicated when you have a lot of them so and we have a lot of that going on in town so we really need to do something to streamline this get people in and out People get very agitated when they have to wait an hour or more to get their registration stuff. If I can add to that, our our operation is much more efficient than it was back in that day that he was talking about too, oh, yeah. because everything is so well, you know, computerized. Even despite that, the lines are getting longer, and when he says the people are more agitated, we are noticing a huge difference in the attitude of the customers at the window on those days. It's and I don't blame them. Um, but they get very frustrated and then they get to the window and realize they don't have everything they need Which is why if I had that extra person Sometimes on those days I could go out and just go through the line on the days that I'm not working on an election You know, I, I'd have those three to four people at the window The lines wouldn't be as long and they wouldn't have to you know, people wouldn't have to wait as long. So yeah, thank you. Yeah, One other question Christy, maybe you can answer this too if you did ha add a new position, a full-time position, is that the, the money you have here, does that include benefits? 
No, Christy actually figured that when we were discussing this before. Do you so that would increase the budget on what part? And under benefits? Um, it would be under, social, under personnel administration and under the insurance. Okay, so, all right. So we'd have to yeah. take that. So and we did look at that, and it was, in comparison to the salaries, it was minimal in comparison, but okay. because I was concerned about that as well. Okay. So. Anybody else have anything else? All right. Good. Thank, Thank you, you. Jane.